I've been very lucky this year in that I've managed to have a couple of astronomy holidays. I've had one trip off to La Palma and I've had one trip to Portugal, to Porto Covo to be precise. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you what my portable astronomy equipment looks like. When we think about portable astronomy, that falls into two camps. One, when you're at home and you're taking the car and you can afford to bulk up your equipment, which isn't such a problem. And then if you're traveling to more exotic destinations and you're reliant on aircraft, you need to think very carefully about the weight and making every gram pay. Most airlines limit hold luggage to 20 to 23 kilograms. Sometimes you can pay a bit more. Very expensive if you get caught out at the airport being overweight. And then for cabin baggage, which is where I tend to put my telescope and cameras, you're restricted to 8 to 10 kilograms, depending on the airline. So I'm using a Williams Optics Redcat 51mm objective lens. It's very small and lightweight. It's a fast apochromatic refractor with an f-ratio of 4.9. The Redcat is a Petsville design that involves using low dispersion doublet in combination with the further two elements down the optical path which means that you get a good speed for the telescope, so good f-ratio, and it flattens the field image. And I've been getting pinpoint stars right up to the edge of my field of view. So here's my red cat. You can see on the front there's a lens cap. You unscrew that, and you can see that there's a Bartonoff mask built in. I found it very easy to focus using that. There's a nice dew shield on the end. This screws on and off for transport. Just reverse this down, screws in, makes it very, very short. The lens cap goes on the end again. You can see here on the back, I've got my Canon converter because I'm using an EOS R so I need an adapter for the uh, RF lens mount. Comes with the Vixen style shoe. I've got that on top of a ball head. You can see there's a field rotator here. You can rotate the scope nice and easily. Somebody moves around and I've actually got an auto guider on the top so I'm using a QHY5 camera and a QHY5 guide scope and I've got that connected to my Apple Mac using PhD and I'm finding that works really well with the Star Adventurer. I think all in all it's a really nicely made scope and certainly my colleagues who are using other types of scopes, uh, even from Williams Optics, are all admiring this one. So I think this one is a fantastic little scope and I think it'll give me good service for years to come. The guiding assembly that I'm using with the scope, I've got the Manfrotto 055 tripod, very sturdy, very impressed with it. This one's actually carbon fiber because when you're traveling by aircraft, you need to keep the weight down to a minimum. On top of the tripod, I've got the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. So this tracks, it's very, very good, particularly with the auto guider. And I've also got the equatorial mount, which goes on top of the tripod. Uh, the rest of my friends here are actually using the wedge off the Astra track and if anything that is a weak part of the design because it is a little bit uh, weak compared to the highly engineered Astra track although of course the Astra track is a lot more expensive. I have been powering it using this Anker power supply though you can use four AA batteries in here and in honesty I think the four AA batteries would have been fine. I use this all night and it's barely used any of the charge so it doesn't draw much current at all. I've got a red dot finder which I've been putting on top of the camera and of course I'm using my EOS R and here in La Palm the skies are so clear that most of the targets we've actually been able to see with the naked eyes or at least the stars very close to them so the Andromeda galaxy you can see with your naked eye, Triangulum galaxy, the Perseus double cluster and a few other things that we've been imaging, very easy to find with a red dot. This is the uh, counterweight, so you can see I've got the adapter for the pole master on the front. It doesn't need to be right through the center of the equatorial uh, axis, it can sit off center, works just as well. So the pole master I've been using to get dead center on the pole star. Uh, other people tell me you don't need to be quite so precise, works just as well, particularly for short exposures. 
guided. I've been running four or five minute exposures. Again, my friends tell me that they can do much longer than that. This clamps in here, and then the scope clamps onto here. And there's a nice counterweight. I did consider leaving the counterweight behind because of the limit on the aircraft. Glad I didn't because it would have been really difficult to use. So with the EOS R mirrorless camera coupled with the red cut refractor on the Star Adventurer on the really nice but lightweight Manfrotto tripod, I feel that I've got a very good easy to use travel setup for my astronomy holidays. This has been the first time that I've really used my EOS R intensively and I've been very impressed by the quality of the camera. This is the mirrorless camera from Canon with the RF uh, series of lenses, though of course I've had it coupled with my William Optics Red Cat refractor most of the week. Canon are rumoured to be bringing out an EOS RA which is modified or specialised for astronomy next year and I think that's certainly a camera that I would be interested in adding to my collection. One of the things that I've really enjoyed this week has been doing the time-lapsing at night. So I've got a second camera, a 650D, and I've had that set up either just uh, static or when I've had the EOS R and Redcat on the NEQ6 mounts, I've had it sat on the Star Adventurer. And I've done quite a lot of imaging of the Milky Way. It's very clear and very beautiful arching overhead, and you can see lots of things in there, all the dust lanes with your naked eye. So you've now seen what I use for portable astronomy, particularly for travelling by aircraft, where you need to keep the bulk and the weight down. So just to summarise what I've got, I've got a very sturdy tripod, I've also got a second aluminium Velbon tripod, which is actually quite shaky, but it's been fine for doing time lapses at night, and it's really useful to have two tripods, particularly if one's dedicated to a telescope for astronomy, and the other one you want to do some more creative things while you're imaging at night. Very important to have a good equatorial mount that's going to track reliably. I found the Skywatcher Star Adventurer to be pretty good, I've been doing up to five minute exposures using an auto guider. Then you need to think about what camera you're going to use. I kind of really like using DSLRs. I've been using the EOS R, which is the new mirrorless camera from Canon. It is an unmodified camera, so that makes it harder to capture some of the hydrogen rich targets. So you need to be a little bit picky on what you use. And coupled with the Redcat, I found it to be an excellent choice. The other thing you need to think about is power. My MacBook Air runs all night, doesn't draw a lot of power, and I haven't needed to recharge, so that's been fine for running PHD2. The other thing to consider is the sort of camera you're going to use. My friends and I all use DSLRs, which use the standard batteries, so that really hasn't been a problem for us. If you're going to use CCDs, particularly cooled cameras, then you're going to have a significant power draw, and again, you're going to have a, a challenge in thinking about how you're going to power things through the night. So you're going to need some sort of portable power source, which is heavy, and there are restrictions on taking batteries on aircraft. The thing that has caught me out a little bit has been the need for dew control. We had one night in La Palma where everything was sopping wet and the lenses just fogged up as soon as we tried to dry them. And for time-lapsing, that's been harder because I find that lens tends to fog up much quicker. So some form of dew control would be good, which then means that you need 12 volt and you need a regulator and other bits and pieces. And I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I think I need to consider the time of year that I come and if dew is going to be a problem, I do need a solution. One other thing to consider is whether you're able to hire equipment at your location, particularly a bigger telescope and a heavy duty mount. In La Palma we were lucky to be able to hire two Skywatcher NEQ6 mounts and with the saddle bar two of us were able to image on one mount. It also cuts down a lot of weight if you can plan it in advance. You maybe don't need the tripod and the mount and etc. So if you are thinking of going on an astronomy holiday, all I can wish you is happy travels.